summertime's life. The weather's got me on a summertime vibe. It's like three summer days, summer nights, and yet life treating me right. I look left and right. High street kings of life. Couple honeys and they're looking alright. Fast approach them. Let them know that it's nice to know them. And of course I got an internet modem. MySpace, Facebook, take a look. Leave a comment on my page. Got new beats to show them. Hi guys. Oh, you've caught me. Just chilling out in the country at my house. No, only joking. I'm here to do Jake Gosling's producer's house. The guy behind Ed Sheeran, Miss Bratt, Wiley. He's worked with Mark Ronson's name, but a few. Let's go have a look, shall we? <laughs> so here I am with the man himself. Hello. Hello. So we're kind of here as quite countryside, a bit of a retreat. Do you find that it's nice to get away from the city when you come here? Uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, it's, it's also great for people that come down and work with me because it's, it's, um, it's completely sort of, you know, set away from everything else. People just focus and get on with it. Welcome to um, my studio. This is where I do my music. Get in in the morning, um, open up, do the usual sort of stuff. You've got the, uh, the Papa John's, which is always nice to be warmed up um, from, you know, for lunch later on. We've got a little office bit here where we've got different people come in and do their little emails and blah blah blah. The TV which is like so old but still works and a drum just to do a bit of vibing on. Bit of a keyboard over there. And you've got to check out this view, this view is insane. This is a guy walking into view but there you go. Justin Hey man. They've got pizza, perfect. We've <laughs> got Lou in there, but I don't know, you've probably seen Lou's before, so we won't go in there, probably stinky. Uh, and then this is like the live room, um, where the vocalists and different people come down and work. Um, live keys, lots of outboard gear, guitars. And here, this is nice, this is a Hammond. I like to use a lot of old sort of analog stuff and mix it up when I record. So all these things are my, my little babies. Through here, this is the main control room and the desk. These speakers, actually, that's quite a good story about these speakers. They came from John Lennon's studio, who's like around the corner. And a mate of my dad worked there, knew someone, and um, basically managed to get hold of them. I work on this old thing here, which is my PC. <laughs> Everyone would be like, what the hell are you doing? I remember I went out to America and I put this in my suitcase. And um, they were like, what the hell is this? And never really seen, you know, people still working on it. But if it works, it works. Around here we've got really nice, this is my favorite keyboard. This is the Jupiter 8. And my dog here, Jupy, is named after it. Um, perfect for getting like weird sounds. How did you start out your production career? Um, I started out originally in bands, that's how I started out. I was an artist f first, but yeah. um, and uh, I was plugging away doing that for a while, and then um, I was always recording the bands and stuff that I was in. Yeah. So it felt like a natural thing, you know, like early days of like, you know, getting a little Atari or whatever it was, and then <coughs> recording, and then um, slowly doing more and more of it. And every time I was in a band, we get to some point and someone would drop out and go, I need to get a proper job. You must have done quite a lot of hard work to get to this point. Obviously, it was quite an organic progression, but were there like certain points in your career when you kind of had to make you know, the right choices? Yeah, I mean, I think, to be honest with you, it's all, it really is about hard work. I mean, luck yeah. plays a part in it, but, you, you know, the key, the key is working really hard at it. I mean, I think, you know, that, that, that can't stress that enough. You've got to be on it and you've got to be like, completely focused and do it. Okay, so I'm in the studio <laughs> and the first thing I'd probably do would be obviously turn everything on, set it all up, um, make sure the levels are down because sometimes you want to turn something on and the mic feeds back or whatever. Um, load up the computer, the usual thing to be honest with you, um, and then start getting to work on, on the track. I mean, day to day will be different. I mean, I do remixes, so it could be like I would be sent the parts um, down the internet and then I would download them in the morning and then I would start cracking on with the beat and working with you know, the, the, the vocals I've got there and then building the track around those vocals, cutting them up, moving them, slowing them down, or whatever's needed to, to get the remix right. And then there would be the other thing where I'd be maybe working with an artist a day, so then it would be the artist would come down and we'd sit down and we'd start talking about what we were going to do. Um, and then um, we would start on a track, so maybe I'd start on a beat. I, I always like to start tracks from fresh. A lot of people don't work like that. They like to get things prepared before like the artist or rapper or whoever comes down. Um, but I much prefer to sort of start on a whole new, like literally a blank page because I like to keep it 
like a lot more organic with the person I'm working with. Um, so there's that, my phone's going mad. <laughs> Go away! And your style's quite different because you digital and analog kind of stuff. Yeah. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, I mean, I think the analog side of it was something that um, I really liked because there's there's a lot more like like you you can you can you can find things that you wouldn't normally find with a digital yeah. thing. It can be a bit set in stone, um, and I think you, you you know it's nice to mess around with plugins and stuff. They can only take you so far. But when you've got like a, a an, an analog instrument, it has a mind of its own sometimes. And sometimes you press a few buttons and you change an LFO or a frequency or a little filter and before you know it you've created something that no one else has got. People go, what's that noise? What's that on there? And you go, it was I don't know. <laughs> something, something happened. How it happened. But you yeah. went, and when you stumble on it, it's great. Yeah, it's really good. I have my own like uh, separate thing where I look after artists as well. I do a bit of management, and I also have a publishing company as well. So then it will be admin side and stuff like that. So I just have to sort of keep it like you know mixed up as much as possible. Um, so that's sort of roughly what my days are about. In terms of the tracks, um, I've got one up here which um, I did with Brat and. Ed Sheeran. Um, so I work on Cubase basically. Um, I've mentioned that earlier, but um, it's really whatever works. I mean, I know a lot of people that just work on Fruity Loops or um, you know, blah blah. blah reason. Um, it's basically whatever works for you. So for me, it happens to be Cubase. When the dark I have a lot of vinyl uh, records basically, and here you've got my record player a bit dusty and covered in tobacco but that's perfect for lifting off um, old records and stuff um, and the way I create my sounds um, will be a mixture from using plugins VST plugins for example or mixing it up with analog synths and stuff as well and also records from vinyl um, and over time I've sort of built up a whole catalogue of, um, of samples basically, which I have my own sound to. As a producer, it's important to have your own sound and create your own thing, but you never stop learning. Um, there's always different tricks you can try, um, but it's real trial, trial and error, and just and just keep on, keep on doing what you do, um, and make mistakes as well, because that's all part of it. Do you use samples a lot then of other people's tracks and stuff that you reuse or? Um, I do use a lot of samples, yeah, but I mean, I think that, you know, it, it's a tricky one because you, you know, you, you've got to be careful because obviously yeah. there's legal implications. So, you you know, like, um, for example, when I did the, the Summertime track, the, the Wiley one, it was a, a, a lift from the Daft Punk thing, but they, in fact, sampled it from somebody else. Yeah. Um, and I won't go too deeply into it, but, yeah. uh, but anyway, it... It's sort of like sometimes it's quite nice just to lift ideas directly from something, yeah. and then you. It's also familiar sometimes for people, and it's quite nice. You know, it's like, oh, what was that track? You know, and suddenly you've got like the pro green thing with the the in excess thing. You know, using things like that is quite like, slyly kind of jog yeah. someone's memory. Yeah, yeah and, and also they're classic. A lot of those are classic tracks, yeah. so then it can it can really help with like you know pushing the artist forward or, or just trying a new completely new slant on something. Yeah. And you'll suddenly listen to that track in a whole different way, and you'll suddenly be hitting a whole new audience that maybe had never heard it before or probably haven't heard it. Before. You know? Yeah. You know, it's exciting. It's yeah. good. It's good. You've worked with some really hot talent, obviously Wiley, Ed Sheeran, Miss Bratt. Have you got a kind of like favourite person to work with in the studio? Uh, I can't say which one because they're yeah. all they're all great. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, no, I mean I think to be honest with you, it's really interesting because all the people I work with all have the same type of thing. It's they're all different artists, but it's like they all have so much to give in different ways. And, and you know to be really cheesy, but I love working with all of them in different yeah. ways because they all bring different things to the table. Mm -hmm. And I think you know for my job, I'm really fortunate because I get to work with all these different people. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm doing this this uh, this LP thing with Ed at the moment, Ed Sheeran, and you know we're, we're drawing from another a whole a whole new aspect of, yeah. of, of of rappers, and it's now bringing a whole new dimension into what what Ed's doing or what what I'm doing and. 
suddenly the whole thing changes again. And I think that's that's great because you're, you're just there's something really nice about working with different artists because you're just you're just getting more and more inspired in different ways, and it doesn't become like that tune, that tune, that tune. So so we've got that. Um, the kit is the kit, and then we start moving on to how the track's going to be now. Ed, Ed was working on this riff here, so we had this sort of little guitar thing. Some, some sort of country and western vibes going on from the Sheeran. We like it. Um, okay. Okay. So we got that going down. Okay. Um, um, My breath. I don't put away. Okay, so then we we sort of we're sort of slowly getting up to the the things with the bass coming in, the guitars coming in, and then obviously finally once that's going, we'll loop around the track quite a bit, and then probably start jumping around the room. So I broke and sky as I hold my breath. I don't put away. The rain drops down and it hurts inside. I wanna leave this place now. No, not now. Guy I probably know I'm working with today, Ed Sheeran, and he's he's here. Ed. Huh? Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is Jake's studio. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We're going to be cracking on with some tracks today. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, we we started working together about probably like almost three years ago. We were hooked up to Jake's publisher, and um, we've done a, a lot of tracks. The first track we wrote on the first day was a song called The City. Which yeah, is, which is doing well on, on the YouTube thing. Doing well. Um, and then um, yeah, Jake's practically family. Um, <laughs> Very very close. Well, yeah, we've, um, we've been working loads together. And, we did um, two 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 EPs with Jake as well, and we're working on a collaborations album at the moment with um, lots of people from the scene, um, just to just to try and branch out. Yeah, sounding sounding wicked. So we've got like well, we've got Wiley has done a track so far. Yeah. Jeremy, should we play some previews? Some previews, yeah, so exclusive. When I strike black, not even Argentina's gonna cry for them I'm a wicked night with the ammunition The haters know where the family lives You want a cash player, not one ginger's just gonna lose enough more than I need this I say sleep is the cousin of death But I hear an ash, cousin of death Let me go uh, I fell asleep on myself, woke up in reality They daydream about losing my sanity I've been riding me forever, but I'm blind Working with people like Wiley and working with people like that, uh, even Ed Sheeran, you know, in, in, you know, everyone's got this whole drive about it and, and, and this energy about it and, and none of us sleep, none of us stop working, none of, uh, everyone's wired in, in that way, we're all sort of very, very similar I think, and I think that really helps draw it all together and make something that is moving forward and it's a good time right now for UK music so it's, uh, it's good and having this whole, whole thing going on is, is really exciting. We're here today to make a tune for Dot Rotten yeah. and uh, hopefully it'll be good. Um, this is a uh, the intro for the thing. I seem to find myself drinking to the powers that be, awaking the shades and shadows on the towering trees, admiring the sea, inhaling fumes of flowers to breathe. Jet lag dies, I'm begging for an hour to sleep. Although my bloodshot wakes and irises, they never find any. Clock stop at times with this sunshine, can find many. Although my eyes are heavy, they won't be closing soon. Cause I hope that time waits when nobody else suppose it's true. We make a rose of juice, through acid taps and vocal boosts. To see the flash and lights of photo shoots, we make a multi boost. I say whatever I feel to vent a rhyme, so I can still invent the lines and stay close to the friends of mine. Cause we all recognize real is what my father says, and I'll be sticking to this phrase until I pass. The first tune we uh, made for the whole the whole project, uh, and Wiley hooked up on it uh, through through Jake, because Jake did all of Wiley's first um, wasn't first record, but the one the one that had Rolex on and stuff like that um, did like summertime and whatever. But yeah, this is uh, the Wiley tune. The thoughts I have could be clear ones, and they can seem vivid. The goals I reach are not near ones. The further than limits, I block around. So when I'm looking through my mind sheet, in it, can I be free for a minute? Can I be me for a minute? Thoughts I have could be dark ones, even be smart ones. No, I'm gonna have a couple. Are you gonna play me though? Someone's never meant for the radio. I get it in, forget the radio spin. I'm just doing my thing and I don't have time for the playlists. How much will you pay me though? Someone's not a hit on the radio. Are 
oh, 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 oh. So yeah, um, yeah, there you go. That's a uh, that's a few a few little previews. Um, there's there's a lot more artists jumping on. Um, we've we've made tracks for quite a few, but uh, I won't. Sample, well, yeah, we got. I mean, we can we can probably say some some people. It's just they haven't yeah <coughs> they haven't jumped on it yet. But yeah. I go on to an example on Sunday, so he's going to do that. And you've also worked with uh, Mark Ronson. I have, yeah. yeah. I did work with Mark. Yeah, we did um, on the uh, Cash My Pocket track. Yeah. So that 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 that, that was mad because I got sent over the track from Mark and um, and John Wall liaised between the between the whole thing and got sent this thing. And the mad thing about it was that Mark never really likes to record stuff to a click track, which means that everything's like. Yeah, so the whole beat was literally just like flying around yeah. this whole thing. So logistically for me, trying to sort of like put everything in time and trying to get the whole thing to sync up. Um, and of course with Wiley's, Wiley's flow on top of it, it worked, it worked so well because it's something that you wouldn't really expect. And then when uh, Daniel Merriweather did the, you know, the all I really want is cash in my pocket, the thing on the top, the whole thing sort of, Sort of, uh, sort of worked really well, but um, yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, it did well. Is it something you like to do then, working with another producer? Yeah, I do. I love working with other producers because you, you get you get to see how they work, and what's really interesting is when I get sent the parts from them, you really get to see like how it's laid out inside their minds. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. You get to see how they like how they'll layer all the different tracks and have everything there. And you go, oh right, you do it like that, do you, Mr. Ronson? <laughs> Interesting. Uh, and everyone's got their own way of working yeah. and recording. Um, and it's good. Well, when I did something for Keen, it, it was like the same. You know, they had like like hundreds of tracks. You know, literally just like layered up hand claps of like 50 tracks just on hand claps, for example, yeah. or something like that. And you're like, wow, it's a lot of work for me. But at the same yeah. time, it's interesting to see how different people work. You've also been featured on a few video games. Yeah, well, just tracks on computer games. Uh, PG, yeah, like for um, uh, God, what's the, EA Sports, there you go. Um, so yeah, EA Sports stuff. But that 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 happens off. Um, you know, you do tracks and then they get synced up. But that's more to do with the you know the publishing side of stuff. They they put tracks forward for stuff like that. But yeah, I'm just going to get something on a computer game. Or <clears throat> yeah, do you do you enjoy doing that? Yeah, I do. I mean, I don't specifically write for computer games, but yeah. how, how it tends to work is you do you do a track and then you know, like for example, um, I think it was Need for Speed was the, one of the last ones. And then you have like they're, they're in the car and then you change the stereo and then on comes your track and you're playing a game like Wicked. Oh, yes. Yeah, put the pedal down. Yeah. Let you get back to your calling then, by the sounds of things. Know, my calling is calling. It is. It is. Banging your door down. Thanks so much for joining us and letting us have a little nose around your gaff. No worries. Thank no you. Worries.